We start with the 9800X3D, an easy pick for a gaming build in 2025. With 8 cores and 16 threads and a boost clock of 5.2 GHz and lightning fast L3 cache, leaving us a surreal 1440p gaming experience. Since we are going with a small form factor case, the Ghost S1, a mini ITX motherboard is the obvious choice. We'll be using the X670EI from ASUS. This board has plenty of USB ports, Wi-Fi 6E, PCIe 5.0, as it is the flagship of its generation. We have a relatively low CPU clearance on the S1, so to cool this gaming beast, we went with the IS55 from ID Cooling. We will install the heatsink once we finish with our storage and memory. For the storage, Oracle sent over their IG740 Pro PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD. With 2 terabytes of space, I can now relocate my game library for my 1 terabyte Crucial X9 Pro, which I use to archive my most recent video projects. This drive offers read speeds up to 7400 megabytes per second. I'll provide a link in the description if you're interested in trying it out. We are switching up the memory. 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory clocked at 6400 mega transfers from KingBank. 32GB is really the sweet spot for overall gaming and light productivity. We have plenty of space to hopefully avoid any turbulence, something that the Noctua NF A12 15mm Chrome X fan is good at. Now that the motherboard is fully assembled, we focus our sights on the RTX 5080 FE. The 5080 FE is a part of the latest generation of NVIDIA Blackwell graphics cards. While it is two slots in thickness, its length is the absolute max the S1 will support. As we know, the cooling design directly conflicts with many sandwich style small form factor cases. Fortunately, Nvidia over engineered these cards with two 35 degree angle vents on each side. Thermal visuals by the channel Gamers Nexus show us just how much those side vents step up to help with cooling. It's not a perfect solution and we'll take a look at those thermals later. Believe it or not, but the Ghost S1 is almost seven years old. Released back in 2018, it shook the small form factor community with its top notch build quality and its incredibly tiny footprint. The S1 is a sandwich style case made from CNC milled aluminum. Our sample is the silver colored limestone. The finish is incredible and it's no wonder why this case has had such a long run. Sadly, the S1 is at the end of life stage and at the time of making this video, there's a limited number of stock left before they're all gone. There are some quirks to the case. There is no toolless features. With over 30 screws, you need to remove 16 just to access the main chamber. Two incredibly well-built CNC side panels slide up, exposing the center spine. One side for the motherboard and PSU and the other for the graphics card. On the front panel, you get an LED power button for a super clean and minimal look. At the rear, there's several cutouts for the GPU, motherboard, and the power supply extension cable. The top panel is perforated with small holes for some passive airflow. The bottom panel is a bit different, with bigger cutouts and a place to mount a 120mm fan. The PSU mounts to an, an adaptive bar that can be raised or lowered manually. You also get a cobalt blue PCIe 4.0 riser cable. Because the car maxes out at 305mm, we need to remove the front panel. Now the 5080 can slide cleanly into the case. The fully assembled board mounts upside down so the PCI slot is on the top. Next, the power supply, which in my opinion goes really well with this build. The silver diagonal fan grill gives it an extra pop. The ASUS ROCK Low-Key 750 Watt Platinum Power Supply. This is the SFX L unit, which will make cable managing and installing the bottom case fan a bit more challenging. I'm not doing myself any favors by going with the really stiff silver wire cables from my DIY. With the help of some zip ties and clever routing, we managed to get the fan installed. 16 screws secure the top, bottom, and side panels, and that's your build complete. You may have noticed that the studio space is different. We recently underwent renovations to create a moodier look and feel. However, the space is still extremely small and we needed an all-in-one productivity and filming desk solution. That's why when FlexiSpot reached out and offered their E7 Plus premium standing desk, I was on board. We're located within Canada and the desk arrived super quick within two days. I selected the white frame with the 55 inch dark bamboo desktop, helping with that moodier look and feel I was going for. Installation took about 30 minutes by myself, but I recommend grabbing some help as the legs are over 50 pounds each. The frame can be customized to suit desktops up to 72 inches in length and has dual motor supporting up to 540 pounds. The digital control panel is super simple to use. Customizable buttons allow you to set height presets. 
There's even a convenient USB type A port for charging your phone or other devices. They offer plenty of add-ons to help you get the perfect setup. I went with their underdesk cable organizer, an easy choice if cable management is your thing. Their clap-on surge protector for quick access when I need to move my setup, which is pretty often. And their standing mat, which is surprisingly comfortable. And if a white frame and bamboo top isn't your thing, they offer plenty of desktop options to fit your office setup. Plus, you can take advantage of that 30-day risk-free return policy. And if you love it, and I know you will, you get 15 years of warranty support. Use this code to receive $50 off on your next order. I must say, this build is super sleek and compact, and boy is it compact. An RTX 5080 with an SFX power supply inside an 8.3 liter case? Nuts. The build quality is really impressive. The thermals can be a concern if you go with any modern CPU over 6 cores. That includes the 9800X 3D which has 8 cores and a TDP of 120 watts. And I'm pulling up to 145 watts from the socket. We undervolted the 5080 and set the core voltage to 975 millivolts at 2750 megahertz, which showed positive results over stock in Cyberpunk 2077 1080p, with DLSS set to balance and frame gen times 2. At stock 1080p, we see the 9800X3D hit 91 degrees while pulling 86 watts. However, the GPU isn't working that hard, pulling 197 watts at 60 degrees, pumping out 197 frames. We see a big reduction in CPU temps at 1440p at 78 degrees at 74 watts. That's to be expected as more pressure is applied to the GPU while pulling 226 watts at 64 degrees. This gets us 170 frames, and in 4K things balance out even more. The 9800X3D really sees another reduction to 70 degrees while pulling 59 watts. The 5080 sees a 3 degree increase over 1440p and pulling 40 watts more. We got 102 frames in 4K. When applying the GPU undervolt, we see better gains in 1080p. The CPU is much cooler at 81 degrees and the 5080 is 1 degree cooler. Less impressive numbers in 1440p with a CPU reduction by 3 degrees and the GPU is 2 degrees cooler. The gains are non-existent in 4K. Oddly enough, the side vents on the 5080 did push out a lot of warm air despite the limited airflow. With a temperature sensor and some Captain tape, I was able to get the temperature of the side vents. The surface of the 5080 remained under 50 degrees at its warmest and I'm really impressed with those numbers. No matter which productivity test I ran, the CPU hit 96 degrees. And that's not really what this case is intended for. As far as the noise, both fans ran under 40 decibels, which is pretty good. That's it. Run out and buy it. It's a great case to collect and when they're gone, they're gone. I'm really looking forward to the Ghost R1 with pre-orders set to ship out in the coming weeks. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.